Shalom family, peace and blessings, peace and blessings. It's Martha Messenger, back with another video. This one, I made a video yesterday talking about seven signs you're blocking the Holy Spirit's presence. And this one's gonna be about seven signs the Holy Spirit is talking to you, so we must take heed. These are things I learned through my experiences, my testimony, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys can relate too. So let's get us go. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Number one will be you are led to godly information, wisdom, and knowledge. So um, I didn't even know what sin was until 2018. I didn't know what being lukewarm was until like the end of 2018. I didn't know anything about the Bible. Um, I believed in God. I had faith in God. I believed that Jesus was the Son of God. Um, but I just didn't know. I didn't have the information to have the knowledge. And what thing will God will do, right? He will use other people to inform you. Or I'm going to go in. I'm going to go in this video. He'll use and then like, you're led to more godly information. And that information will lead you to repentance. That information will lead you to change. Like, okay, like, this lifestyle I'm living may be wrong. You know, like there's um, people who struggle with like, porn or uh like homosexuality you know and god will lead them you know god being a shepherd lead them to certain information that you know that type of lifestyle will lead you to you know judgment so that's one thing i noticed about the holy spirit the holy spirit is always talking to us many are called if you're chosen and that's being when you're when, when you're being called that's the holy spirit talking to you now a lot of people don't hearken to the voice of god so they you know and be, when you don't do that disobedience that opens up doors for curses opens up doors for, you know, studying your growth in life, your spiritual growth, and your relationship with God through Christ. So that's number one I, I learned, guys. When I, like, I didn't know that smoking was a sin. I didn't know any of that was a sin. Like, I was led to it. God used other people. And that information, like, it hit my soul, hit my spirit. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8. You know, be sober, be, uh, so, because I'll leave a verse right here. It's like, be sober because the, your, as, your enemy seeks for someone to devour. So uh, I didn't know that verse. I didn't know the Bible. But I always had I had belief in God, and God will show you guys. He will show you, man. I'm gonna go in this video. Uh, number two is a sin that's blocking His presence will warn you of the dangers if you don't stop. So let's say if you've received the knowledge, remember the Bible says if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice of sins. Okay. So let's say we all we all fall short of the glory of God. No one's perfect, as in no one's going to be a life without sin, right? The Bible says if a man says he's without sin, he's a liar and the truth is not in him. But when you're willfully submitted to over to a sin, okay, when you're willing, you're not trying to fight that sin off. You're not trying to fight the temptation. Okay, you're not trying to, you know, walk in the spirit. You're just giving over to, you're, you're giving yourself over to the flesh, which leads to death. Okay, the Holy Spirit will warn you dangers to come if you continue to submit to your flesh. Okay, like I said, we all fall short. I know that I'm not here to talk about we live life without sin. That's impossible. Only Jesus Christ is the only one to do that. That's why we must take example of him, how he lived his life. And we must have the spirit in us, the spirit of Christ in us. Okay. And that's what makes it a lot easier to fight against sin. Because when you have the spirit of Christ in you, not to say you're going to be without sin, but that spirit quickens you. It makes it a lot easier to fight this flesh. Okay. So that's the very key important. The Bible even says, if any man had not the spirit of Christ, he is not of his. Okay. So one thing I noticed too, guys, when I fell into my vomit, the Holy Spirit was warning me, if I don't give up this sin, danger is coming. Warning comes before destruction. The, 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 the voice of God speaks all the time. The Holy Spirit always speaks. Even when you do good. When you're doing good, the, the, it lets you know the blessing's on its way. Now, sometimes your life might get harder, you know, but that's just a test. You know, most of the time it's just a test. Okay, so just like when, when the good things come, the Holy Spirit will let you know, hey, your, your, your harvest is about to be in due time. Just continue, you know, continue uh, sowing to the, the Spirit. Just like when the bad things come, when you're sowing to your flesh, the Holy Spirit will warn you the dangers to come. That's the comforter. The Bible says that the comforter, I'll leave a verse right here. I think it's in John chapter 14, verse 26. Uh, if, I'm, if I'm wrong, I'll leave a verse right here. But that's that's what it is. The comforter will let you know that good things are on the way. Or and if you're doing good, if you're doing bad, then bad things are on their way. And it will warn you. Okay, that's love. It gives us a, it gives us a chance. It gives us grace. It gives us mercy. But if we, if we just willfully commit Live into that, uh, give into those temptations, willfully give into those sins, dangers on its way, and it will warn you, okay? Number three will be dreams of spiritual death. And uh, a lot of people don't know, when you die in your, in your dreams, guys, remember the dreams, the dreams is the spiritual realm. When you die in your dreams, that means it's going to manifest in the physical realm, okay? There's a lot of times where I had dreams where I was in relationships with satanic agents who were sent by the handler to destroy me. And as we were sleeping together, I would have a dream of them trying to kill me. And they failed because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I think I have a video on this. It's not on my channel, it's on my Patreon. I forgot what the title is, but pretty much I was talking about how um, in my dreams, they tried to shoot me with the gun and he had the gun to my face and he was clicking, but there was no bullets coming out. Like no weapon formed against you shall prosper, bro. Like, And so, and also too, I dodged a bullet. 
being in these, and not just a relationship with these friends to do idolatry bull, uh, bullet. Okay, so the dreams will warn you. Now, if they get you, if they do kill you in the spiritual realm, that means it's going to manifest. Okay, I had a brother who did a constellation call with me. He told me that he had a dream he died in, the, in his dreams. And then a couple of months later, he was in a coma. Okay, he was in a coma. I forgot exactly what happened, but he was in a coma, guys. You see how that works? So if that happens to you guys, where you die in your spiritual, in, 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 um, in your dreams, guys, I'm telling you, we must fast, pray, ask God for forgiveness, to ask him to direct our steps, uh, direct our steps. Remember that? The Bible says, delight yourself in the Lord and he shall direct your steps. Hopefully I'm saying that verse right. I'll leave a verse right here if I'm not saying that wrong. But that's what we must do, guys. If you have any dreams of spiritual, if you die in your dreams, guys, that's that's scary. Okay, you don't want you want to avoid this. Now, if you have dreams of they try to kill you, but they fail in your dreams, it's because in my experiences, it's because I was either friends with the agent or in a relationship with the agent or even entertaining an agent. Okay, you guys got to understand this is spiritual warfare. Even when you entertain an agent, you entertain entertain a child of the a child of Satan. You give them your energy. They could they could still rob you of your joy. They could rob you of your peace. They could rob you of your blessings. Just entertaining, just texting, just talking to on the phone. Y'all gotta be very careful, man. Y'all gotta be very careful out here. So understand that it is a spiritual warfare going on. We must be sober and understand that some of these people who come our way, guys, they might not. They might not be evil, but they, they're weak vessels. They, they're weak spiritually. Uh, they, they're opening up doors and, and behind closed. They open up doors for sin to come in their life, and, they're, and their vessels being used to hurt you. Okay, so when you're chosen, when you're chosen by God, you're anointed. You're strong. You're spiritually strong. So the devil is a coward. He got to use other people to try to drag you down, to try to drag you down to that low level to get you to stop you from your blessings. He's going to use other people, guys. I'm telling you, man. Discernment, discernment, discernment. If you if you lack discernment, guys. If you lack wisdom. Ask God to as well, and he'll give it to you. Okay, number four is um, send signs of confirmation or uh, other members of the body of Christ or people. Okay, so when you, just like these, my videos, people always like, Mark, you know, your videos are confirmation uh, for a lot of my videos I do. That's God, guys. That's God. There's not a coincidence that my videos pop up on your uh, your YouTube feed. Not just me either. There's many other people of the body of Christ who's also, uh, you know, so, you know, being the shepherd, sowing the seeds. Okay, the seed being the word of God. There's many of that. That's the confirmation, guys. God uses his people. Just like the enemy, the devil could use his people. God uses his people too. Remember, the Bible says that the gospel must be preached to all nations before the end comes. We are living in the end time. So God's going to raise up his army to spread this gospel. Okay, whether you're, you know, no matter what nation you are, whether you're a uh, male or a female, the gospel must be preached to all nations. Okay, and he will send signs of confirmation that you're on the right path. I had a sister who did a consolation call with me earlier. She told me that, uh, Mark, I was I had doubt in God, I had doubt in the Bible and Jesus. She said that, and she prayed, and then she was led to my videos, and she said that was confirmation. Do you see how it works? That's the Holy Spirit, guys. That's the Holy Spirit. So that when you get those confirmations, that you're praying, you have doubt that God is real. You have doubt that Jesus is real. You have doubt that Jesus is the Son of God. You have doubt in the Bible, okay? And you, and you're led to these type of videos. That's confirmation. That's the Holy Spirit, guys. That's the Holy Spirit. Woo! People are saying, Mark, you don't woo no more. Woo! The Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit of joy. Woo! Okay, let's go. Let's go, man. I'm telling you, so that's a, that's a confirmation. If, if you're still in doubt and you made this far in this video, guys, and you're like, oh, is Jesus the Son of God? Is the Bible real? Was it written by man? You know, that's one of the biggest false doctrines I hear these days. Oh, it was written by man. King James was a homosexual, this and that. All oh, BS. Don't fall for those lies, guys. Don't fall for those seducing spirits. Okay, the Bible says is when you, when you confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwells in you. Okay, so always understand that, always understand the Bible is everything that they taught us, guys, is a lie, which means that we must learn from the Bible, which is God's word. All right, God's word and how, as a, and there is, remember, Bible, basic instruction before leaving earth. All right, man, always understand that, basic instruction before leaving earth. So, yeah, man, um, remember, I also said other people, too, because one person who led me to the truth, guys, he's in jail. He's facing time, and I think he did, did some robbery charge, okay? Um he was the one who led me to the truth. He's the one who led me to the Bible and stuff like that. So that's why I said, you know, maybe not, maybe not the body, the members of the body of Christ, but also could be the other people too. Number five is you gain peace and clarity and not confusion. Let me highlight this, not confusion. Okay, you gain peace and clarity. So whatever, which is like confirmation. When you get that confirmation, it comes with peace and clarity. Like you gain a better understanding. Okay, you understand that this is what God wants you to hear. This is what God, you know, you're hearkening to the voice of God. And when you, when, when, when the Holy Spirit, when wisdom speaking to you guys, there's no confusion. There's no confusion. I'll let you guys see it because people are like, Mark, you always block the board. I'll let you guys see it. Okay, so there's no confusion. 
No confusion at all. When you when the boy, when the voice of God's talk, remember, God's not the author of confusion, so He will never lead you to confusion. When the Holy Spirit is talking to you, it will never lead to confusion. Always understand that, guys. Number six is you hear voices. Like now, when I say hear voices, not like the de like people always. It's going to be a scoffer saying, "Oh, you hear voices." The Bible says you must hearken to the voice of the Lord. So that's what I mean by hear voices. And let's say if you're going to a trial and tribulation, you're facing a storm, you're facing, you know, stuff of that nature, right? You'll hear stuff like, you know, trust in me. You hear God say that. You hear, you know, don't give up. Keep going. Or, you you know, keep fighting. You'll just, it's like motivation. The Holy Spirit will motivate you. Will let you know, keep on fighting. Remember, the Bible says that uh, do not grow weary and well-doing for in due season you shall reap if you faint not. And when you have that blessing coming your way, the Holy Spirit will let you know, just keep going. Your, your blessing is about to come. Just like when you're doing wrong, when you're doing evil, it will warn you when evil is about to come. Okay, the Bible even says uh, evil pursues sinners. Evil pursuit sinners in Proverbs. I'll leave that verse right here. Okay, evil pursuit sinners. So always understand that, man. You're gonna hear good voices, and it's like you'll be. It's like the Holy Spirit. You're gonna know, like, okay, this is the Holy Spirit. Remember, guys, get wisdom with all that getting, get understanding. Forsake or not. Number seven is you run into a street preacher or a shepherd of God. Whether a shepherd of God, either it could be on YouTube, like on social media, or in real life. Okay, it's not it's not by mistake, guys. You you're just randomly walking through downtown or wherever wherever you're at, and you see a street preacher and whatever sin that you're battling with, he has that sign well, warning you. Okay, Noah was a preacher of righteousness. Noah was street preaching. Noah was preaching the word. Okay, and what, what was Noah? Noah's vessel was being used by God to warn other people, just like these street preachers. Okay, just like these shepherds of God you see on YouTube, or you know, planting the seed, the seed being the word of God. So this is when that's the Holy Spirit warning you guys. Let's say there's a sin you're battling with that you're you're unaware it's a sin. You'll see you'll run into a street preacher, and that sign will say, uh, "Repent" or whatever. All any sin that you have in bondage, you know. And I, I might I might start going street preaching again, guys. Let me know in the comments if you guys want want me to start. Uh, I'm I never really recorded. I I did like a couple of times, but when I go street preaching, I go by myself. So uh, I never like really cared to like record. I just you know did it myself, but. You know, that's one thing I noticed, guys. I ran into street preachers and shepherds of God, shepherds of God, excuse me, on the internet, YouTube, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, man. So, number, uh, quick little summary. Number one is you are led to godly information, wisdom, and knowledge. Uh, let me highlight this because this is key. Uh, a sin that, number two is a sin that blocks you, blocks its presence, will warn you of the dangers if you don't stop. Number three is a drink of spiritual death. Number four is a signs. Uh, send signs of confirmation through other people or other members of the body of Christ. Number five is you gain peace and clarity, not confusion. Uh, number six is you hear the voices like, trust God, don't give up, keep fighting. I highlighted intuition and wisdom right there. Uh, number seven is you run into a street preacher, shepherd of God. So these are the seven signs, guys. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you haven't already, check out this end screen. And if you wish to support me, my link's down below. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. I love you guys so much. I'm out. Peace.